I have just arrived to the country of Brazil. <laughs> but instead of telling you about the country of Brazil, I'm gonna tell you about my first day with Brazilians. Specifically, 50 of them. One of them picked me up to be nice. Another gave me a jacket because even if it's summer in the US, it's winter in Brazil. One gave me drinks and another gave me food. Like this Brazilian acai tree. All of them broke into dance because Brazil and said Sao Paulo is the mecca of gravity. Turns out it is. But when it's almost sunset, they took me for a strong Caprinha drink and then out of nowhere, Bianca said, Do you want to jump? And before you know it, someone is pushing you off a bridge in Sao Paulo. And keep in mind, this is my 10th hour in Brazil. If I were to describe this place in one word only, that word would be... Fire! That's one minute! Welcome from Japan. Today I decided to take Aline to one of my favorite countries in the world, Japan. We hung out all day, had Japanese food that she did not like because it was not vegetarian. I can, I can smell me. Bought Japanese products like Pokemon, hung out with Japanese people, and walked around Japanese neighborhoods that are beautiful. But I lied, I am not in Japan. We are still in Brazil, specifically in Sao Paulo. Here is why I told you we are in Japan. It's a little bit random, but Brazil has the most number of Japanese people outside Japan. In 1908, the Japanese immigrated to Brazil to work on coffee plantations as cheap labor. They were meant to replace recently freed slaves, make a quick buck, and return to Japan. Now, there is one and a half million Japanese here with their own culture and tradition. But they're slowly going from being Japanese to being Brazilian. That's one minute from Japan. See you tomorrow in Brazil. What you see behind me is a bunch of unattended rocks with a noisy broken pipe in the middle of a square that smells like pee. But this collection of rocks represents one of humanity's biggest crimes, slavery. This is the old port where a million slaves arrived in Rio de Janeiro because Brazil imported the highest number of African slaves than any other countries. Five million of them. And the country that was the last to ban slavery in the Western world. Back then it was a problem. Slaves were treated badly as we can see from their graves. And it's still a problem today. Slavery history is slowly being forgotten. The slave port is filled with garbage. The slave bones lack basic temperature control. And two blocks away, there's a government-funded museum of tomorrow that showcases the future. But if you don't remember your past very well, you're very likely to repeat it in the future. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. Hello from the country of football, Brazil. The country where everybody plays football. The young and the old, the poor and the rich, in poor neighborhoods and in fancy arenas, and on every TV channel. Brazil is the only country that qualified for every World Cup and won it five times. The country that brought us people like Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Pelé, and Neymar, who grew up right here, are Brazilian and they're the best in the world. There is so much football in Brazil that when you throw a ball at And the first would be football. That's one winner. See you tomorrow. <laughs> I just spent all day coming back from the Amazon. And to tell you how much I like the Amazon, I'm going to take you on a boat ride. The boat ride begins here, where the Amazon does. At the intersection of the Black River and the White River, together they form the Amazon River. And as you take your boat through its waters, you will say to yourself, that must be heaven. The water makes a perfect mirror of the clear blue skies. The shy dolphins pop up to make an appearance as the rain does too. Because, well, it's a rainforest. But when it stops raining, you'll spot a sloth on the nearby tree, a shiny piranha under your boat, a bird flying over your boat, and a tree so big, you'll think it's the biggest in the world. And even at night, the Amazon is filled with life. 
The Amazon is much more than a river going through trees. The Amazon is by far the most magical place I've ever seen. That's the Amazon. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. Favela. It's a term that means nothing to you if you're outside of Brazil. But if you're inside of Brazil, this is a favela. It's a slum, a shady town, built on the slopes of mountains like this one, known for drugs and poverty. And inside those favelas, streets are so tight, you have to use motorbikes. Poverty is so rampant, there is no sewer system. Water is stored on top of houses. Inside of them, there is barely any space. Electricity is easier to steal than to pay for. And in some areas, it's so dangerous you cannot film. And when I filmed with my phone, I saw drug lords with guns. All of this is happening right next to the rich areas in Brazil. This is the best form of income inequality. It almost feels like a favela is a country within a country. Except your passport is not a piece of paper. It's your low income or your dark skin color. That's a favela. That's one minute. See you tomorrow. This is it. We're leaving the country of Brazil. But before I leave, I want to tell you what I saw in the country of Brazil. I saw the obvious. I saw Christ the Redeemer statue in the beautiful city of Rio de Janeiro. The largest number of Japanese people outside Japan. The Brazilian steakhouse with unlimited meat. People that love football. People like Cobra the street artist and Neymar the football player and the locals. And I saw the magic of the Amazon everywhere. But I also saw the less odd. I saw the streetlight that changes based on location. I saw the poor favela town right next to the rich one. And I saw the slavery history of Brazil from a couple of rocks in a square and a tiny museum two blocks away. But despite its ups and downs, this is just 5% of what they call Brazil. The remaining 95% of their people, music, technology, culture, food, and nature, you'll have to come and see for yourself. That's one minute. We need it for! <laughs> when I was a kid, I grew up in a conservative community. And I was taught to greet a stranger. You extend your hand, shake their hand, say hey, and that's that. But after visiting Barcelona, and after visiting Peru, Colombia, Brazil, I realized that Latin people are so warm to say hello, you hug, you touch, you kiss, you kiss again, and call each other guapo, which means Even if you don't know them! The Latinos are so friendly that when they greet my girlfriend by kissing her, I get jealous. After meeting so many Latinos, I realized that a hug is nothing to be afraid of. A hug is just another way to say hello. That for a minute! This was supposed to be a happy, feel-good kind of video, but it's not. Earlier today, I took a flight across the world from Brazil to Israel and a train across the country from the south to the north and a super expensive cab, all without telling my parents just to surprise them at home. They thought I'm in the Philippines. I walk in slowly, knock on the door, and no one answers. Turns out they're out of the country. And I didn't know. My surprise was a failure, but it felt good to be home. Then I turned on my phone and saw the clashes and fights. Jerusalem is essentially at war. Three Palestinian teenagers died just today. Three Israelis stabbed just today. This is becoming the new normal, and it's hard to ignore it this time, especially when innocent lives are being wasted. That is a fact. Mom, Dad, I hope you're watching this, and I wish you were home with me. But home is kind of a mess right now. That's one minute. See you tomorrow from Jerusalem.